All right, so I want to do another bite-sized bass hack, and this one is called the center channel knock test. Now, I, I bet you're probably scratching your head and wondering what the heck I'm talking about, and I'm going to explain it to you here in just a second. Um, basically, if you know the channel, um, you know, it's all about deep bass and, and, and strong, powerful bass, uh, as deep as you can hear it, and, and strong, powerful presentation, and that's all good and well. But if your center channel is messed up and things like that, it really does affect everything. And my bite-sized bass hack videos, uh, they're all about short, easily digestible videos, uh, each covering a specific topic that I've dealt with uh, in one way or another in hopes that it'll help you with your home theater. Um, so what I wanna do is explain um, basically how you can make a $700 uh, center channel sound like absolute crap, <laughs> okay? Um, and and not that you'd want to do that, but how it can happen. And so uh, I had that happen in here, and it was absolutely terrible. And so what it revolved around is what I had the center channel sitting on. So I'm going to go over here. I'm still using my uh, gimbal here, so uh, I apologize for getting used to this again. But um, what I'm talking about is I had a uh, plastic, uh, like, shelf from Walmart. It was $12. Um, it was just a placeholder. It was never intended to be permanent. Uh, it was something that allowed me to mess with things in here and get it right. Um, problem is, the speaker sounded absolutely terrible on that plastic shelf. It wasn't designed to be anything acoustic. It wasn't designed to hold speakers. And so it just sounded terrible. All right. Now, what I mean by the knock test is whatever you're going to set your center channel on, you want to knock on it and see what kind of sound comes out of it. Okay. So right here, um, I'll come down here. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Not great, but not bad. This here. That's a subwoofer, all right? So if that thing's heavily braced, you still get a sound out of it. Now, if you come over here and to this thing, this is terrible. This is a very, very bad surface to mount a speaker on. And this goes for, you know, your, your bookshelves, uh, your surrounds, everything. Anything that you have your speaker connected to, you wanna make sure that you don't have that issue, all right? So now, when I talk about the knock test, one of the things I talk about is, all right, so we've just got a basic rag there, okay? So we've got this knock, okay? Then you can hear a difference already. Fold it up, fold it up again. So it gets better the thicker you go. Now, I found this over here, and this is a, I don't even know what it is. I think, I think we use it to dry our dishes with, okay? So it's like a foamy thing. Um, there is no sound coming out of that, okay? So you can knock on it as hard as you want. Now we go back over to this. You still have some, some sound coming out of it, okay? Come back over to this. No sound coming out of the wood itself, okay? So this makes a good isolation. And I talk about isolation for subwoofers, okay? This has got isolation. The subwoofer can freely move. Same with this one, you know? It can move and not... What, okay, and this is what some people mistake, is you're not trying to prevent the sound from going into whatever, like your floor or your stand or whatever. It's the physical energy, okay? That it's the physical energy that translates into sound, okay? It's, sound will go through whatever it's going to go through. Um, but when you isolate this, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the physical movement from going through and making sound on whatever surface. So that's the whole idea behind the knock test. Um, it's simple. Uh, there's nothing very specific you need to use. That piece of foam, I, I had it. It was nothing that I had to go out and buy. It just worked. Now, is this the you know absolute end of how I'm going to set this up? Yeah, probably not. I'm probably going to do something a little bit different with it um, and have it be a little more put together. Um, this whole thing, the, the whole idea was to see if it was even possible. And 
I have some ideas as far as like really making it, you know, um, show worthy and, and things like that. But really, the whole idea behind the knock test is just to find out if your your speaker's physical vibration is being transferred into the the speaker stand, into your TV stand, your entertainment center, all that. And if you've got your t your center channel mounted like inside of something, you know, it's a good idea to wrap it up and isolate it all around so it doesn't rattle inside there. Um, and after you do this, okay, let's say you had something terrible like I had before, and then you do something like this and it's way better. Um, I would highly recommend running room correction again. Uh, and again, if you run room correction, you want to keep, you know, you, you don't want to do one sample here and then one sample way across the room. That's a bad idea. Um, Odyssey recommends no more than two feet from the very first measurement, which is your most important. So that's, that's again, these are little things I talk about in my base hack series. Um, so if you do this, if you find you have this problem uh, and you do this and it makes it sound better, definitely run room correction again, but also go through the rest of my base hack series. Even the ones that don't seem to make sense, check them out anyway, because again, center channel knock test, who's ever heard of that? It's something I made up because it's something to describe what I'm talking about here. So even if you look at one of my base hacks videos and you're like, I, that, how does that apply to me? Watch it anyway. Um, if it doesn't apply to you, cool, but it just might. Um, but I'm trying to make these kind of make sense and I'm trying to make these quick and to the point. So anyway, hopefully that helped. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the bell. I appreciate that. Um, if you're down to support the channel, check out the links I've got down in the video description below. Um, all those are like free ways for you to support the channel if you're so inclined. Um, if you're not inclined, it's okay too. Um, but I, I appreciate the support. It allows me to make more videos like this. And uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying the channel. This whole uh, RV project has been uh, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, and I've, I've I've got a lot of reactions I've expected, and even some that I didn't that were even like more telling. So, uh, but anyway, again, please subscribe, and uh, thanks so much for watching. And I've got some stuff coming up that's pretty interesting. So stay tuned. Thanks again. So here we are in the house. Um, just want to show you. This is what I usually have under the center channel, um, and when I knock on these, you're going to hear the the plastic backing, but. I think they work pretty well. I'm going to show you what it sounds like and the difference. So this is bare. Again, you're hearing some of the backing there. So I could probably use a little bit more, but that's still pretty good. That's better than I expected, honestly. So that might be worth upgrading a little bit, um, putting something underneath the uh, center channel. But at least I had these to begin with. Um, it really does make a difference, even if it's just something like this. And uh, this is also good if you have height issues. Um, if your center channel is too tall, something like this doesn't add a whole bunch of you know height to it. But if you have the room and you can do a little bit more, um, it doesn't have to be a towel, of course. But you know, just something foam. Um, you know, you've got uh, mouse pads, the real thick kind. Um, anything that'll absorb that and you knock on it and nothing there um, something like a, a pillow worked for me so um, pretty much anything but just try the knock test on it and see what you think